Hello everyone, welcome to the video. We are going to be talking about open web steel joists in Structural 3D. As a structural engineer of record, you may be familiar with the LRFD and ASD load tables offered by structural, the Structural Joist Institute, also known as SJI. When using joists on a project, your workflow may currently consist of calculating the resultant distributed loads on a joist and then finding a suitable design in the load tables. With Sky Substructural 3D, this process is streamlined. Let's take a look, look at designing K, LH, and DLH series joists in SkySiv Structural 3D. Right now we have this trapezoid shape uh, roof project here with different lengths of members. Uh, we're not going to show the rest of the structure just for simplicity. It's really just to show um, members of different lengths. Let's take a look at the loads. So right now on these first three members we have a uniform distributed load of 0.4 kip, kip per foot or 400 PLF. Um, this last member we have a variable load that goes from 0.4 kip per feet down to 0.2 and then this last member we have has a one kip uh, const uh, concentrated load. To start, first select all the members you would like to design as joists. And we're going to use some of our fancy uh, control or selection methods here. So we'll select all those. I already have the members panel open. Under type, go to joist. And then hit apply. Confirm that confirmation. And now you can see that there are some end release changes here uh, marked by those little dots. Joist series can really only be designed or selected from the SGI tables if they satisfy a few criteria. So, um, one, they need to be experiencing uniform distributed load, so these th first three, um, and then they must be exhibiting the simply supported condition. So in Structural 3D, when you change the, the member type to Joist, we automatically um, fix their end conditions to what they need to be, and then we take away that field so that users cannot uh, edit that while the member is still identifying as a Joist. So after you change the member type, click on a joist you want to design, or a member you want to design. Click on the Design Joist button on the left. A prompt will come up, and let's just fill in these, these fields. So max depth, um, 160 is the default because that's the highest number um, in the load tables. We're going to pare this down to about 30 inches. Uh, we're going to try and see if there's a joist from the K-series, um, and then we're going to use the LRFD factored version of the table. So at this point, really, there's only three fields you need to input. The next step would be to click on the Pick Joist button. Uh, Structural 3D is going to pick the most efficient joist based on the criteria that we've inputted here. So do note that the joist will be selected based on total uniform load capacity uh, or the black values in the table, not the red values in the joist tables. So if you wanted to try a different joist that's separate from uh, the optimal one that the uh, software has picked for you, then you would type in the joist into this field rather than clicking pick. So if you wanted to try a joist size down, uh, you'd put that in and then you would click on check. Um, and then this message will be in red if the unity ratio is over one. If we come back to 28k10, you can also click check for this even though it was the one that we already picked. Click check and this, this is the, the one we checked obviously, so this is in green. So we'll just click pick again. Um, when you're ready to commit, let's commit it. You can now see that section one was undefined beforehand. Now it is the 28K10 joist. Um, and then this is the subsequent virtual joist that represents that. Because Structure 3D requires a stiffness component for our solver to run, every time you commit a joist, our solver is going to identify a virtual joist that closely matches uh, that K-series, LH-series joist um, flexural properties. So virtual joists are basically a compilation of arbitrary joist combinations provided by SJI uh, that are usually used in conjunction with lateral resistance design um, with like a joist in there, so like a lateral resisting moment frame with a joist or something like that. Um, each virtual joist represents a different combination of, of chords for a given depth uh, and is really just represented by a W shape. Um, that W shape is what uh, they pull the section properties from and that is what we attribute to all of our K series, LH series, and DL, DLH series joists. Uh, because we're limiting the end conditions and really only letting 
uh, each member would be subject to a uniform dead load. These stiffness properties that are that are inherent to the virtual joist do not affect uh, the design in its in its current capacity of our of the joist design. So let's do let's design another one. So let's we'll move into this joist here, a smaller span, same process. You hit design. We're gonna limit our 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 max depth to say forty. Maybe we want you know maybe it's a deeper ceiling or something. K series, same thing. LRFD factored. Pick joist. Um, this is our most uh, Efficient joist now at this point, so 30k7. When you commit a second joist, what will happen is it will bring in that joist and apply that directly. So now you can see we have two sections in our model. We have the first section, the 28k10, and we have the second section, the 30k7. Let's just quickly do this third one here. We'll do 40 again. Commit that, 28k6. You can see as we as we design them, they you know if, if they're different because these are different lengths, they'll they'll show up as obviously they're optimized for different different joists. Um, and like I said, the uniform dead uh, uniform distributed load needs to be on there. So if you try to do it for a variable distributed load, let's just quickly go through this again. You'll get a message saying your distributed load is not uniformly distributed. Uh, please change that or, or apply a uniform distributed load. So I won't do it for this last member, but that's the same message you'll get. Um, for the rest of the error returns, or, or if you're not if you're not getting a commit button to show up, uh, documentation is a very good list of, of what those um, error messages are uh, entail. So if you wanted to duplicate a joist with with its distributed load, you can do so. So um, let's say you design. Whoops. Let's say you design a single joist so like this joist at the end here let's say you design this this single joist and then you want to duplicate that over an entire um you know warehouse length or something um, once you design the single joist you need to simply cl um, click the joist or select it and then hit control and also select the distributed load um, if you select the joist you can obviously duplicate any member you want but if you want to you can du uh, duplicate the load as well so with both of those selected, hit Control D. You get the repeat operation. This is used, and um, you can use this for really anything that you can copy. So we'll just do maybe five repetitions, ten feet apart, in the blue axis, so the positive Z axis. Uh, we don't want to duplicate supports. We want to duplicate loads, and we want to connect nodes with members. So if we hit submit. Now we basically have generated a long bay of members here all conforming to that same joist that we uh, selected in the very first part of this video the 28k10 so the last thing we wanted to mention is the fact that you can use area loads as well uh, to distribute uniform distributed loads to the joist so you don't have to use the distributed load tool um, to load your structure if you don't want to so this is a one-way area load that we've applied to just a very simple bay um, and all the members um, going this direction are already switched to the joist type. So we'll turn on the uniform distributed loads and then go through just a really quick example here. The process is exact same. You click on design joist, you impose a, a depth limit, you pick a series, a load case, and you pick the joist. Same way where you'd commit it as well. And that is a quick summary of open web steel joist design uh, in accordance with SJI in Structural 3D.